This whole section is all about sampling, taking small chunks out of a larger population. So we'll see what a population is, how to take a sample out of it, and then what parameters and statistics have to do with all of that. A population is the entirety of any group that you're interested in. Typically, we might think of the population referring to, let's say, the United States, all of the people in the United States. Uh, but you could also say, uh, my population of interest is female students at this particular high school. And that could be your population. Another thing about population, we usually think of it as the number of people. So what's the population of the town of Byron? Or what is the population of uh, St. Paul, Minnesota? Uh, we don't, we're not as worried always about the number of people, but the population is just identifying the specific group. A sample is a portion of that. So whenever we're taking a sample out, we're taking only a few members of the population. So instead of asking all Americans or all female students at this particular high school, we are only going to ask some of them to answer our questions. Sometimes with sampling, we don't always take an entire group together uh, of people, let's say, sitting next to each other, people that are similar. We try to spread it out. Um, so this diagram might be a better way of thinking of sampling as a bunch of uh, small chunks of the population taking as randomly as possible uh, to form a, a new smaller group. Looking at this uh, map of the United States, if our population was the United States, we would want to make sure that we had representation from all over. And sometimes uh, we might control for that. We might intentionally make sure that we get a few people from, let's say, every single state. Other times, we might just say we're going to randomly choose a uh, hundred people from this entire population, and maybe it's possible all of them would come from Texas, but most likely they would come from uh, a range of different places. So there's different techniques depending on how much you care about getting a super diverse group, or if you have ways of breaking down the population, let's say, by state. At the end of the day, we want to know things about populations. Populations of interest are called populations of interest because that's what we want to know about. We don't necessarily want to know about a thousand Americans. We want to know about all Americans. We don't want to know about 10 students. We want to know about all students in whatever school or whatever state. Uh, the problem is, is that there's just too many of them, and it's going to take too long to talk to all of them. So that's why samples are actually just shortcuts. The thing is is that they are necessary because it is not often possible to talk to entire populations. We still have our same population, students on the robotics team. We're still we're asking them a slightly different question, what is are you the oldest sibling? And the 12 people responded either yes or no. Yes or no. So they said one of those two answers. And this is a, uh, when we're dealing with categorical variables, we often have two choices or maybe sometimes more. And what we have to do is calculate the fraction or proportion of people who answered in one particular way. In this case, we're going to say the proportion of students who said yes. We have a yes, two, three, four, five, six. Six yeses, so six out of 12 total would be 0.5. And that's why we have our P equals 0.5. That's from taking a census from asking everyone. Let's take a sample, just like we did before. Let's randomly choose four of those answers. We might get a yes, a yes, a no, and a no. Well, that proportion is 0 0.5. Two out of four, 0.5, just like we had with the whole population. So in this case, our sample worked out great. Take another sample. No, no, yes, no. Uh-oh. Now only 0.25 of our population, a quarter of our population, uh, is answering yes, is the oldest sibling. So that is not the same as our entire population here. And then finally, we take another, a third sample, and we get yes, yes, no, yes. So 0.75. 
The point is, is that they could all come out a little bit different. They're not all going to give you the exact same answer, and they're not going to all give you the right answer. This right here is if we ask everyone. This is the correct answer. Taking a sample means that sometimes we're going to get it wrong. Just a little side note here, we'll talk about this in a sec, but uh, we use P for a population proportion when we know everyone, we use P, and we use P with this little goofy hat on top, uh, this uh, little arrow pointing up to refer to a sample proportion when we don't have it exactly right. So the bar or the hat tends to be the symbol that tells you, hey, I'm a sample, not the whole population. So again, populations are really what we want. Samples are shortcuts. And the problem with samples is that it's easy to mess them up. They can be wrong. The good news is, is that there are ways to minimize how wrong they are or to at least know how wrong they are so we can state honestly what we found when we go out and do a survey. And we'll look at all those different techniques in a little bit.